Hello. Today we are going to look at deriving something called polar form, which is a version of complex numbers where we focus on the angle between the complex number or the complex numbers modulus and the positive real axis. So if we think to what we already know about complex numbers, we know that, that there's a strong connection between them and rotation. Multiplying by i rotates us anti-clockwise through 90 degrees. Uh, multiplying two complex numbers together causes rotation and spiraling uh, out or toward the origin. So there's a lot of rotation going on when we think about complex numbers. Polar form allows us to look at that more directly and to uh, solve some more complicated problems involving rotation. A lot of the intuition for this work is going to come from the fact that you already know, basically know the maths, from trigonometric functions and the unit circle. The core concept here is going to be identical to what we already know in trigonometry. That said, let's get into it. If I have my circle drawn in here, the significance of that is mostly to uh, guide you back to uh, the notion of the uh, unit circle. Uh, and I have my complex number written here on my argand plane at uh, x plus yi. Well, that means I started at the origin and I went x across in the real direction and y up in the imaginary direction. So I can see here I have a right angle triangle and this is my number in rectangular form or a plus a, uh, bi form, the one we're familiar with. What we want to aim for is to end up with polar form, which is what this line is, and it's similar to a formula that you'll see on page 20 in the log tables. Page 20 in the log tables is slightly different. It's the Moivre's theorem, which we will come to shortly. Uh, this is what the Moivre's theorem is based upon. Uh, and in the log tables, you will see or for the modulus because it is essentially like a radius. So we're going to increasingly see that an or is going to be used for the modulus of our complex number. So let's look at how we derive it. I can see my right angle triangle here. I want to start talking about the angle between my blue line here, my complex uh, number here, and the positive real axis. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to use what I know about right angle triangles in order to relate the x and the y that I have in my rectangular form to something involving the angle. So if I draw this out as a model triangle, my x, that's my y, and this would be or or the modulus. How am I going to relate my x and my y for my rectangular form to this angle? Well, I know that in my right angle triangle, I can use sine, cos and tan. So cos of this angle would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So if I write that down in general, cos of an angle would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And sine of my angle uh, will equal the opposite over the hypotenuse. So let's take my situation here. Cos theta is going to equal adjacent over hypotenuse, so x all over modulus of z. Multiplying both sides by the modulus of z, we would end up with x is equal to, pardon, is equal to modulus of z times cos of theta. That's just multiplying both sides by modulus of z. Here I have sine theta uh, would be equal to my imaginary component over my modulus of z. Multiplying both sides by modulus of z, I get my imaginary component or y component from trigonometry would be equal to the modulus of z times sine of theta. This argument is again identical to what we would have done, what we would have done in trigonometric functions. There is literally no difference. 
What is different is the way that we write that coordinate. Remember, if we were dealing with the Cartesian plane, we would have our coordinates as x, y in our brackets. In On the Argand plane, we have our coordinates as uh, real plus i times imaginary. So when we were doing our work in trigonometry, we would have converted uh, this into stuff involving sines and cosines uh, by having it as h cos theta. Sorry, comma h sine theta. H being the hypotenuse. So that's what we already know from trigonometry. The only difference here is that our coordinate system works differently on the Argand uh, plane. So let's just apply the same reasoning to uh, the Argand plane uh, and sub in. So z modulus of z cos theta, that is our x plus i times tend to put i, we tend to put all of our letters in front of our sines and cosines. So I put i in front this time. As so you will often see this, uh, as I mentioned before, or or is often used for the modulus of uh, z. But regardless uh, of that, we have a common factor of the modulus of z. So to get to where we looked at at the beginning, have modulus of z times cos of theta plus i sine theta. And that is our polar form derived. And again, that will often be seen now as or for the modulus cos theta plus i sine theta. And that is how we derive polar form. I cannot stress enough, this is essentially just what we already know in trigonometry, just applied to the Argand plane. And its reason for existing, its reason for us bothering to do this, is that it is going to be very useful as the concept of rotation becomes more important as we continue our work in complex numbers. Mm -hmm.